Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Professor David Tizard. Welcome to this uh, next lecture for this advanced conversation class at Soliode. Today we are looking at the concept of gentrification. Now this might be a new word for some of you uh, and a lot of the associated terms, the vocabulary also might be new, but I think that's a good thing. I think that it pushes and stretches your use and command of the English language. Also, I would suggest that the topic itself is is a real one, is an important one. This is not just getting things from a textbook that you can never use in real life. We can see gentrification happening all around us. Actually, even in the areas uh, around Soliode, around the campus, you can certainly see a lot of gentrification there. I've been going to well, I've been at Soliode since uh, 2007. I've been there for 13 years and there's definitely been a lot of gentrification during that time. So uh, it's an important topic. It's a useful topic. One thing that I, I will make clear <clears throat> from the beginning is that uh, recently looking through some of your discussions, <clears throat> excuse me, is that while some of you are discussing the topic very well. Uh, I don't see much use of the language or the expressions and primarily uh, this is this is a class to build your fluency. I completely agree with that. One of the things that I am looking for in this specific class uh, because it's measuring your shiliok, your skill at the English language, it's not measuring, let's say, your intelligence or the depth of your understanding of social issues. Uh, if you want to do that, you can join me in other classes or other lectures. But in this class specifically, it's looking at your shiliok. And one of the things that I do is I try to bring out some of the expressions, the vocabulary. I need you to try to use that more where possible. I need you to try to demonstrate that you didn't just look at the title of the the, the material and then just write or uh, speak your opinions based on that, but that you actually spent some time looking at those words, understanding them, and then learning how to put them into your own conversation and your own use of language. That's really important. So if you're confused about that, or if you're not quite sure what I'm saying, please get in touch and ask me. Overall, ultimately, I need you to use, demonstrate your understanding of the language that we study a little bit more. Some of you aren't doing it at all, uh, and that's a little bit of a problem. So try to focus on that going forward. Uh, let's move through this quite quickly. So um, gentrification involves displacement, displacement. So you will understand placement, placing something somewhere, but it involves displacement. Dis is a negative prefix like you are disappointed or you disprove of something you disagree with somebody here we've got displacement so instead of placing somebody somewhere you are displacing them and that's a common idea involved in gentrification but more importantly than just displacement you're looking at higher status people displacing lower status people so people with more money, richer people, higher up the social ladder. They go in, the higher status people go in, and they displace the lower status people. In that sense, and again, this is all important language for you to try to get, it, get to grips with. In that sense, it depends how much to you that status, how important status is. Is status really important? Because it's people displacing people. If, if we take out the high status and lower status, it's just people displacing people. Does it matter if they're rich or poor? Does that come into it? Does it matter their identity? It's an important question. Uh, in general, what you see is inner city blue collar communities like the Nodong, the laborers, people working downtown in certain areas as cities develop, as cities get trendier, as cities get more gentrified, they want to expand and, and they want to fill out the city. So these 
uh, these poorer areas of the city get wiped out. Okay, there's the expression, they get wiped out by the newcomers, they get wiped out by the money, because the poor people don't have any way to defend themselves, they don't have the financial means, they don't have the legal means, uh, they don't have enough social respect a lot of the time. Uh, I did notice that this was one of the key themes in season one of, what was it called? Um, Bojagwan, Shinmina. Uh, the, the drama Chief of Staff in English. Um, but that was one of the big themes of that drama, this gentrification of a Xijiang, a Jontong Xijiang, a traditional market, uh, and how to deal with that problem. So it, it's all around you. You also get the extra problem because of the displacement. So because of the highest status people displacing the lowest status people, you then have the problem of where do the lower status people go? Do they live on the streets? Do they find somewhere else? Because that was their home and their homes are essentially being taken away so that rich people can build trendy bars and restaurants and cafes. Now, we may actually like the trendy bars and cafes. We might think they're better for the city. They're better for the economy. They produce more jobs. They look nicer. These are all genuine opinions from some people and they should be respected but you have to balance this up how you feel about this gentrification can be a controversial issue for some people those that are economic or aesthetic based will support gentrification uh, other people who have more sympathy or empathy with the lower class or or ambivalent feelings about capitalism uh, they might greatly oppose gentrification. One of the things that you will notice in the video that I asked you to watch, I'll say a little something about that in a minute, uh, was that gentrification exists differently in different countries. So you're given examples for a phone call and I hadn't turned my phone off. One of these days my kids will run in and it will be like the BBC dad uh, video thing. Anyway. Sorry. Looking at the Arirang video that I asked you to see on gentrification, you will have noticed that in different countries, say in Germany, they discuss Berlin and in America, uh, gentrification affects people differently. So uh, in America, for example, issues of ethnicity, issues of gender, issues of race are more important because of the history of the country than in other places. For example, in Korea, issues of race or ethnicity, of course, they're still important, but they aren't as important because Korea, for a long time, believed itself to be a homogenous country. So here, it's more economic-based, uh, whereas in other countries, the gentrification can affect different things and it can affect uh, different communities especially uh, social minorities ethnic minorities cultural minorities it can affect them in those ways now what happens to the inner city well the inner city gets socially reshaped by these changes so the actual city itself gets reshaped it, but it's not just in terms of the visual thing. It's not just how the city looks. It's not just, oh, there didn't used to be a cafe there, but now there is a cafe there. It does get reshaped physically, but it also gets reshaped socially. And by that, what you mean is that the different social classes, the rich and the poor, the middle class, the young man, the jungin, and, and all these kind of things in Korea, they get moved around the city. So the different classes of people move around and that socially reshapes the city. Specifically, it socially reshapes downtown or inner city areas. And it, when this happens, it says here on, the, on, on our PPT that higher status people, so the rich, the wealthy, they create living space for themselves. So yes, the rich people, they already have an apartment. They might even have two or three in apartments. Uh, they have a place to live, they have a place to work. But what they then want to do is they want a place to hang out. They want a place to relax. They want a place to eat, drink, 
party uh, and have hobbies and, and, and games and all of these different activities. And so what they are doing is they're creating a living space for themselves. They're creating a recreational area outside of their residence. So they will have their residence, they will have their area in which they live, they will have a place, but then they want to go somewhere to hang out and do stuff. And they don't want to have to drive for two hours, they want it close, they want it in the inner city. And that's why they focus on, let's say, the poor areas, because the poor areas where the poor live, these are the cheapest. You'll be able to get a building there much cheaper in a downtown poor area than in Gangnam or Cheongdam-dong. In an upmarket area, a building, a residence, a cafe would be really expensive. If you go to the inner city, to the poor areas, there it will be much cheaper. And so that's why uh, these things happen. The rich people, they go looking for authenticity. Uh, they go to try to create a subcultural niche for themselves. See, if you can understand that, that's quite a difficult expression. I guess uh, not everybody in the class will get that. But you have um, high culture, low culture and subculture. In society, you have these kind of subcultures. High culture in general would be things like ballet, the opera, musicals. Um, low culture is more things like cinema and what else is low culture? Mainstream TV, primetime TV, primetime radios. High culture is done by a very few amount of people. Low culture is done by the general pop population. Not to say one is better than the other, but that's just how they're described. A subculture, sub meaning underneath. Subculture is, you would imagine, things like, if I think from a British perspective, subcultures are things like uh, goths, you know, people that dress up in the gothic, in the black, they like the vampires, or hippies, they would be a subculture. Uh, jocks or the sports people. Uh, the stoners, you definitely don't get a stoner subculture, but you do get a stoner subculture in the West, kind of similar to the to the hippies, I guess, ravers, uh, hipsters, all these different groups. And you can sort of identify them. They wear the same clothes. They have certain words that they like, certain uh, movies and musicians and symbols that define who they are. These are subcultures. And what the rich people are doing by creating these areas, they're creating these little subcultures, these little niches. Um, and they they do this without regard for social convention. They, they think about their own pleasure, they think about their own convenience, they think about their own, uh, their own lives. And it doesn't sound very nice, but then you have to wonder, don't we all do that? Is the only difference that they're a little bit richer than us, and that's how it works. Um, you'll get this word hipster. Uh, hipsters... Hipsters look to try to find authenticity. They look to find individualism. They look to try to be different from everybody else and get into the real culture, not the mainstream culture. Mainstream culture and hipsters definitely don't go together. Hipsters like everything except mainstream culture. So if everybody's going to party in Gangnam, the hipster wants to find a cool place to party. The hipster wants to go to Muledong. Uh, the hipster wants to go to different places where nobody else is going to be individual, to be authentic. But of course, if everybody wants to do that, then they will then start going to Muledong, the same place, and that's when the problems uh, arise. Now, with the, if I can find this, this was the video that I asked you to watch. It's, it's not a long one, but it's, I, I think it's reasonable. You should be able to get through it. And it has a lot of interesting and useful vocabulary in a short amount of time. So I've taken the words from the words and expressions from that, put it onto a slide, and that's really what I'm asking you to study for this week uh, to get it down, to, to have a look at these words, to play with them, to learn how to use them as verbs, as nouns, and, and these things. So 
the vocabulary that I'm asking you to look at, I'll move my face, thank you, face, go over there. The vocabulary that I'm asking you to look at is this list here. Uh, so first you get this high density. They're all taken, by the way, from the Ari Rang video. So you study them, then go back and watch the video and you should understand the video even better. High density. So high in density. Seoul is a high density city. Let's have uh, some of these just down. Seoul is a high density city. This a uh is connected to that. You could population is high in density. Essentially, these mean the same things. There's no difference between the two. Notice here that we're looking at the myongsa, the noun. Here we're looking with this is goes into more an adjective, hyongyongsa phrase. So Seoul is a high density city. Seoul's population is high in density. So if something is very dense, it, it, it's tightly packed. And when we talk about something having lots of people in there, we talk about high density or low density. We don't talk about big density, or much density, but rather we talk about high and low. So you could also just use it like this. The pop that's terrible spelling. Shall we try again? The population is really dense. Or oh, my pen stopped working. Seoul is densely, use it as a busa. Seoul is densely populated. This is a very natural one. Actually, this one is one of the ones I would suggest that you hear the most. It's densely populated. It's a densely populated city. So this is what you're looking for with this word dense. I will say that be careful because dense can also mean stupid, like pabble, like mongtonga. It's completely dense. That person's really dense. That person is not clever. So dense can have two meanings. So be careful if you use your dictionary or things like that. That dense in, in terms of being not smart, not clever, stupid. That's an adjective. This dense is also an adjective. So be careful. This adjective can have two different meanings. So dense, see if you can use that. Next one we're looking at is skyrocketing rent prices. So if we just break this down to skyrocket, that is again terrible spelling, but I'm sure you can see it there. And there's a rocket. Like my sound effects as it goes up in the air. That's a terrible rocket. But to skyrocket is a verb and uh, it, it doesn't require anything after it. So to skyrocket is to increase quickly. So you have something is increasing absolutely that is increasing something is skyrocketing like a rocket it's just going up like that so it's a verb to skyrocket doesn't need a noun here it's just a skyrocket so you can say prices have they have done pp they have done what prices have skyrocketed Prices have skyrocketed. The prices of more, more, more. The prices of watermelons. Shubak, I don't know why, but they do sometimes in summer. The prices of watermelons has. So the prices, prices have skyrocketed. The prices of watermelons have skyrocketed. What else? Um, if you want to get rid of this have you could say like this uh ticket prices ticket prices for what ticket prices for a bts concert 
Ticket prices for the new Hamlet with Benedict Cumberbatch. Ticket prices, 그냥 명사, 다음에 명사. Ticket prices skyrocketed. That's 과거, 했다. 하고 있어, 뭐 하는 중. Ticket prices, how would you do that? 그 뭐지, 하는 중, 뭐 하고 있어. How would you do that with skyrocket? Ticket prices are skyrocketing. That means now they're still doing that. So ticket prices are skyrocketing. The price of tickets is skyrocketing. You could always use it with a but, had to man. The price of tickets skyrocketed for a while, but now they are leveling off. So skyrocket is it sounds weird, but it's a very common verb and we will use it quite easily and quite naturally. And not just about price. Uh, what else? You, the population skyrocketed, you could say. So the number of people living there, the population skyrocketed, the number of fans skyrocketed, uh, Korea's reputation. So a reputation is something you can't touch. Reputation is intangible. Uh, but you could say their reputation, South Korea's reputation skyrocketed. Because of COVID-19, South Korea's reputation skyrocketed. I would suggest that you're comfortable using the word rent as well. That's a good term to be using. Gentrification or gentrify. Gen. Gentrified. So you can break it down into all those different things. That's one of the key words, so I'm sure you understand that by now. Affluent. He lives in an affluent part of town. Those less affluent than others are struggling because of COVID-19. So what does affluent mean? based on those two sentences. He lives in an affluent, well, he lives in an affluent part of town. Those less affluent than others are struggling because of COVID-19. Well, affluent essentially means rich. Sometimes we don't really want to say the rich and the poor. It sounds a little bit too aggressive. It sounds a little bit uncaring. So we might use words such as affluent. Well, I'm a little less affluent than you to live affluently as a busa. Uh, I don't live very affluently. I have to eat rice and gim tea and gim, no steak. So I don't live very affluently. Couple good words there. Uh, the next one is to revitalize, to revitalize. So here we have this uh, prefix, this prefix that to re, re, I think in Korean is like te. Uh, so to vitalize, to vital, vital, vitalize, kind of going on this, to energize, to give energy, to give impetus, to give power, to give emphasis, to give emphasis to something. To revitalize. So if we have a look at a couple of examples, you might see something like this. The movie revitalized her career. The movie revitalized her career. The government is trying to revitalize its relations with with doesn't have me. My spelling is terrible today. With the US. Um, the area was revitalized.
thanks to uh, a cash donation. So with that, again, I'm showing you how the word revitalized is used and how you should be looking to use it yourself. The movie revitalized her career. So what was happening to her career before the movie? What was happening to her career after the movie? What what does the word revitalize mean in that context? What was happening to her career before and after the movie? So here is the movie. The movie revitalized her career. So she, was, she wasn't doing very well. And then the movie, wow, it, re it revitalized it. Her career was going down. She wasn't very popular. Nobody liked her. She wasn't in any dramas or or things like that. But once she did the movie, the movie revitalized her career, made her popular again. And of course, you can see that with many celebrities, uh, with many sports stars, with many actors, musicians, certain things revitalize their careers. It might be a performance, it might be an award, it might be something on the internet, but certain things revitalize their careers and it's, it's very common. Uh, you also see many stars trying to revitalize their careers but it doesn't work you see stars trying to do a new drama releasing a new song trying to come on talk shows but still people might not be interested and thus the revitalization they fail to revitalize their careers so it can be in used in that sense it can also be used in terms of uh, relationships like Guangge, like Hanil Guangge, Hanmi Guangge, Han Yong Guangge. Uh, and you can try to revitalize relationships. You can try to revitalize agreements, uh, conventions, laws. All of these things can be revitalized. And of course, so can areas. If we're talking about gentrification, you can revitalize certain areas. So maybe it looks a bit run down. Maybe it, it looks a bit poor hasn't had any attention for a while. So you can say, well, we need to revitalize this area. I, it, it's also used, just thinking about it now, it's also used a lot on, what would you call it? Uh, uh, advertisements, right? So when you, when you see advertisements for toner and lotions and uh, exfoliants, it will say with new revitalizing serum with new ingredients and a revitalizing essence. Revitalizing, revitalize is always used with cosmetics. So have a look for it in those contexts as well. Uh, displacement, we've, we've studied displacement. Make sure you can use it. Next one is buzzword, a buzzword. Well, at the moment, I would say a buzzword is probably kaptil. Uh, because of the Kyungbi Ajoshi's Hagon or Jasal. I didn't mean to say anything offensive with my Korean there. I meant to say because of the recent suicide of a security guard, because of the recent incident involving a security guard uh, in northern Seoul, uh, a lot of people have been talking about Gaptil again recently. Now, of course, Gaptil is not a nice thing. Gaptil is the abuse of power. In case you're interested, I wrote an article about Kaptil in the Korea Times with a, a student last week. But my point is, buzzwords don't have to be positive. Buzzwords can be positive or negative. They can be romantic. They can be funny. They can be scary. They can be chabyo. They can be discriminatory. Um, that's good. They can be discriminatory. It's not good if buzzwords are discriminatory, but just to try to explain how they can be all of these things. It just means the word that everybody knows, what everybody's talking about, the word that has the most bzzz, buzz about it, the word reverberates through the society. So there are certain buzzwords. Um, gentrification became a buzzword. The fourth industrial revolution was a big buzzword and everybody was talking about it, presidents would use it. If you're writing a report, you have to mention, and now we live in the fourth industrial revolution. It was a buzzword that everybody was using. Sometimes these buzzwords are annoying to some people. They don't like buzzwords because they're just empty. They're just, they're just noise. 
they don't address the substance of something so uh, they're buzzwords to come into prominence to come into prominence so this to come into is like duenda becoming rather than ita to come into prominence so to be prominent as the adjective to come into prominence which i believe is the noun i'm gonna have to double check that but it sounds right um prominent prominent means visible starbucks are prominent all over the city starbucks are visible they're clear they're not hidden away for example if you want to find a dodgy gambling place if you want to go and gamble in so well there are some places of course even though gambling is illegal please don't gamble kids um that was a joke i'm not a gone there i don't think but although there are some gambling places in seoul they're not very prominent you can't see them easily starbucks are prominent starbucks are ubiquitous gambling places are not we could also say on television ethnic minorities are not very prominent disabled people are not very prominent um, you can't see them easily of course they exist there are many disabled people ethnic minorities in society but we don't see them much on south korean television certainly not compared to western television so they're not very prominent something comes into prominence well you well the idea is coming into prominence that's how you would use it well not everybody right now knows gapjil for example most people do but if it's gapjil or if it's kamjong nodong or masang baomi sangcho or kamjong nodong which would be emotional labor or masang would be sort of an, an emotional scar these words are pretty well known but they're coming more into prominence these days because of the news because of the news these words these terms uh concerns about blue collar workers are coming more they're coming into prominence they're coming more into prominence um just to give a couple other examples because we have here the movie revitalized her career you could say she really came to prominence in the late 1990s so when did she become famous she really came to prominence in the late 1990s then she had 10 years where nobody really talked about her but now she has revitalized her career so she came to prominence then she suffered a setback but then that revitalized so you can put the words together and then get a uh, better understanding a clearer understanding of what they mean working class so we've used the terms uh, sort of lower status we have affluent working class these are not exact opposites you shouldn't uh, think of them as exact opposites but they are a lot so the working class we normally think of as blue collar i got a blue collar on today actually i don't have a collar on today uh, i think in korea I'm, why am i going off topic because i just looked at myself and i just thought oh david don't look at yourself i'm one of those people where i think in my mind i look awesome and then i, I see myself and i go oh dear that's me um what was i saying blue collar in korea i heard that these are called chinese collars like mao and uh uh jong -un kim jong -un and things like that uh, in English, we don't call them Chinese collars. Or in England, I should say. In England, when I grew up, we call these... What do you think? What do you think we call these in England? These Chinese collars. We call them granddad collars. Well, that's what I called them growing up. To me, they're always called granddad collars. Do you want this one with the collar, or would you prefer the granddad collar? I have the granddad collar. So, I guess, blue collar. So, either today, I'm a granddad, or I'm Chinese. Maybe I'm a Chinese granddad sounds like an indie band doesn't it the chinese granddads uh, david 
working, I get distracted, working class people, um, taxi drivers, pub workers, people that work in coffee shops, people that are, don't live affluently, people that don't live affluent lives are working class, working class, middle class, upper class, working class. Um, from the interview, grungy, scary places. Grungy. If you want to know what grungy is, go to YouTube or go to Google and look for Nirvana, the band. Of course, you could look for Pearl Jam. You could look for Soundgarden. You could look for Alice in Chains. All of these bands are part of the grunge scene. So you have rock, you have hip hop, you have punk, classical grunge. Grunge is a, is a genre. It kind of it basically came out of Seattle. So in America, it came out of Seattle in the 1990s, let's say early to mid 1990s, mid to late 1990s. Um, people sort of, it has its own look. If, if I say to you, people wear flannel shirts and looks like it comes from a, a sleepy, rainy part of America. It's not all sort of California and bling. Now, these bands were basically the biggest bands in the world at one point, uh, especially Nirvana. They had huge success, biggest band in the world. But they just kind of dressed all the time. They dressed grungy. Their music was grunge. That's what it sounded like. That's how they dressed. So grunge has this certain aesthetic rather than me to spend five minutes trying to describe grunge what it looks like go to google and type grunge grunge music and, and look at some of the pictures and remember you might look at that and go oh that's that's a bit weird but that used to be the cool thing so even if people were rich they try to look grungy this is kind of like the hipsters because they were rich, but they wanted a, an identity. They wanted to be with the cool kids, and the cool kids were into grunge at the time. So people would spend a lot of money to try to look grunge. They would buy jeans with holes in. Buying, I've got some jeans with holes in, but you know, you buy you buy the jeans and they got rips and all kind of things like that. They're like grunge jeans, aren't they? They're grungy, so that's that. Uh, let me finish up here because there's a, there's a couple more and we're already up to 40 minutes downright downright racist policies there were some downright racist policies so we might have covered downright a little while ago uh, maybe week one or week two but again i haven't seen much of it in uh, our class or students using it so what does downright mean down oh, it's downright racist my old band had a song called downright lonely Uh, what about a positive diet? It's, it's downright fantastic. In general, il banjogoro, we, I want to say we use it with negative words. Um, it might be you can use it for positive and negative. You can use it for positive words and negative words. But I feel just personally that it's used a lot more with negative words. It was downright disgusting. It was downright horrible. It was downright uh, racist because you have these kind of down it seems to fit it's more cromulent to put it with negative words normal 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 yeah that's what it means it oh, was downright disgusting normal 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 mad on them god normal mad on them god it's downright so um downright uh, it, was, it was downright dreadful it was downright terrible downright plus young youngs uh Downright plus Pyong Yong Sa. So downright is like a busa, is like an adverb. How terrible was it? I was really terrible. It was downright terrible. How tired are you? Oh, I'm downright tired. Some situations it will sound a little bit unnatural. There are certain words that we put it together with, but just learn that it, it, it's a busa that means uh, very nomu nomu. And see if you can use it. Try it. And then I'll try to pick out. Yes, that works, that works, that doesn't work. Because I can't explain how it works. Sometimes you just look at something and go, that's not natural. 
and you can't teach all the rules until you see it. I'm sure you're the same with Korean. If you hear me something, you say, it, it's just not natural. And it's the same with that word. Um, we owe that to the students. We owe that to the students. So owe, to owe somebody. We haven't really looked at this. So have a look at this. We owe it to the students to do something. Um, students pay a lot of money for tuition. Students uh, want to learn. Students want to better themselves. So as professors, we owe it to the students to provide original material for them. So this these lectures, for example, that I do are for you. They are original and they are, I hope if you go through them all that your English will have gotten better because you're just listening to English the whole time. And I'm, I'm trying to speak to you. Your listening skills would definitely have got better. Whether your speaking skills that gets better, that's the kind of problem that we're struggling with. So you should be speaking as much as you can at home. We owe it to the students to provide original material. We owe it to, um, we owe it to society. We owe it to everyone else to wear masks when we go out. So now you're going to have to wear masks on subways, taxis, buses, have to wear masks. So we owe it to other people to wear a mask at all times. A very common one you might get is this, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. So when somebody's trying to give you, not damn sorry, but when somebody's giving you that sort of advice or especially if I do, let's say, sangrams or counseling and I'm trying to make students do better, perform better, get better. So I, I would say to them, well, you owe it to yourself to try harder. You have all this potential. You have this great ability, but your scores are not quite good. You, you should be here, but you're not. So you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to do better. And that and that's a very common way that we will use that. <clears throat> um, in ruins, I'm not used to glasses yet, I feel weird. So you know, to ruin something, <clears throat> or to be ruined, very common. Uh, a lot of students will say, I ruined my test. How was I? You could say, I ruined my new top. I, I spilt jadangyan all down it. I ruined my new top. I ruined my relationship with him. I sent, I was drunk. I sent a message. Ah, really ruined my relationship with him. My relationship with him is ruined. And that can just mean a, a normal gonge. Um, my new top is ruined because of the jajanyan. My new top is ruined. So I ruined my test. I ruined it. My life is ruined. That's a very common thing from people that are depressed. My life is ruined. Or you can say this. My life is in ruins. My life is in ruins. My life is in ruins. My relationship is in ruins. Ah, oh, my relationship is in ruins. Some the big... What's happened? I don't know. My relationship is in ruins. There was a big fight and blah, blah, blah. These are just examples, by the way. I think my relationships are generally pretty good. You know, every six months, I, I, I normally send a message. If I kind of fall out as you get older, you'll find politics become more important and people have sort of start going on different paths. You can imagine sort of how the Bosu Dangs and the Jimbo Dangs and all these other things happen and... Uh, normally every six months I, I reach out and send messages to people and say, hey, you know, um, our relationship was in ruins, but let's revitalize it. I try to make that a habit of mine. Um, so something is in ruins. Something was ruined. Something is in ruins. The area is in ruins. My life is in ruins. My GPA is in ruins. Common. Last one. That's no longer the case. Well, it used to be. Oh, well, there. That's no longer the case. 
Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's well, that's no longer the case. Um, yeah, we used to date, but that's no longer the case. I used to teach at Swell. In, Swell was a Soliodo program. Every morning at 7 a.m. Uh, I used to do that, <clears throat> which was fun. But that's no longer the case. With students, one of the things that students always say in the Mujipyanka, uh, in the evaluations, is uh, I like how David gives us so much time to talk in class. That's no longer the case. I wish it were. That's, that's what I always try to do. Let students talk because I can talk for hours, but students need to talk. Students need to get their voices out. So that's the last. But because of COVID-19, that's no longer the case. Um, just while we're on that topic, what I would say is don't wait for me to give you stuff. You're responsible for your own life and you're responsible for your own English. So I, I provide material for you every week. Uh, some of it you might like, some of it you might not like. I hope all of it is advanced and I hope all of it is realistic. That's useful for you. Not too much focused on grammar, but take responsibility for yourself. If you want to practice it, if you want to do these things, Send a message to your group members and say, hey, let's chat. Why don't we start a discussion? Why don't we do voice recording? Why don't we do this? Send it to me. David, I want, I want, to help, I want help with this. Well, how's my grammar? I want to record this. David, I want to do a Zoom conversation. It's your life. Now, most people, many people in the class might think, ah, oh, that's fine. But if, if you're into it, if that's what you want, then do it. it, it it's completely up to you. Just know that, uh, whatever you want to do, I'll support you. I'm very big at supporting my students as much as I can. There's some discussion questions there. If you're, uh, if you need something to practice, you should have a look at those. You can pause the video. I'm not going to read them all. That's boring. You can see them. Practice your reading. Uh, use a dictionary. And maybe they might help you discuss or use the language. What I would suggest you do is from the video uh, with all the vocabulary expressions, go back and watch the Arirang video. So spend 10 minutes just writing down, write down the word and then try to make some sentences with it. And then look at the sentences and think, are they right? And then the words will be in your head and then go back and watch the Arirang video, the discussion about gentrification. And then you'll be like, OK, now I, I understand more of it. That's a really interesting thing to do. So you watch it once and it's like, oh, I didn't really get it. What they, I, I get the idea, but I don't understand what they're saying. Totally cool. Study the language. Go back and watch it again. You'll understand more. Best of luck. Contact me if you need me. I'm always here. Um, and good luck with your study of gentrification and the language and vocabulary. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and goodbye.